So today we're looking at the Matthew Palmer watercolour blocks available in two sizes. We've got the quarter imperial size and then we've got the double, which is the half imperial size there. The main advantage of a watercolour block is that it's pre-glued on all four sides. So you don't need to actually use any masking tape to stick to any board. It comes with a nice thick board as standard. It's got a little gap right at the bottom where you can just basically insert a plastic card or a plastic knife or even your finger just to separate the individual sheets. The paper itself is a paper that I've hand-picked and it's one that I use for all my watercolour painting and it's 100% it's cotton which means it's very, very high quality. The main advantage of the cotton versus a wood-based paper is that it's very absorbent which means you can do some really interesting sky effects, water effects or any big washes Rather than it running down the page, it goes into the paper. Another advantage of this cotton is the fact that it will actually stay wet a long time, which for watercolour is quite an essential thing. I'll just show you one or two nice features of the paper. It's ready to go straight away, just turn the cover over. And just to give you a bit of an idea, using quite a large brush, I'm just going to wet the paper in a small area. Now as you do this, just kind of look at the light reflecting against the grain of the paper. It's got a lovely texture as well. It's a not surface texture, which is basically not smooth and not rough. It's somewhere in the middle. This is my preferred choice of paper. It's also a very tight surface because the glue is really stretching the paper, keeping it nice and firm. One of the biggest bonuses of the Fontaine paper is that if it does go a little bit cockly, which watercolour paper does do, whether it's stretched or not, it will always guaranteed go nice and flat when it's dry. And that's a big, big advantage of this paper. If I just lay down some very simple colours, we've got some nice bright yellow. This is a bit of aureolin. Just streaking across. Very simple. You can see, I can put a line of paint on and it's not running down, it's going in the paper. This is what I'm talking about. This is what really makes it work. Let's just pull some burnt sienna. Coming down from the top there. So a bit of a sunset kind of background there. And then just to bring in one or two dramatic clouds using a natural grey, nice and strong. It's always good just to slightly dab that on the tissue there as well. And you can just basically swirl the paint in and the first thing you'll notice of course the edges are going like a speckly effect like a bit of a soft edge which is what you want from wet into wet skies but the main advantage although I'm working on a slope is that this is not running down it's actually going into the paper and that for me and lots of artists is a big advantage it's what I want out of the paper just cleaning the brush there giving it a bit of a squeeze through some tissue make the brush go flat. I can brush this away and almost make the effect of the beams coming out of the clouds. Just give it a nice soften. And the fact that the paper stays wet for long periods also means that I can continue to add as many clouds as I feel I need to. So I could bring a nice dark one using natural grey. Bring that one over the top of it. And again, clean brush, squeeze it through the tissue, and just basically give that nice kind of brush down effect, beams of light, even a bit of rain maybe. And again, the paper's still workable, so using a bit of kitchen roll and a nice little ball, a bit of a twist, we can add some nice highlights to this. Lots of papers would be dry at this time. This is nice and wet still. Even on a nice warm day, just kind of stays wet that little bit longer than some of the other papers. And for me, that was one of the biggest advantages of this paper. And you can see I can dab away, lifting off colour, creating nice little highlights, just kind of brushing those into the picture. And it's putting layers in the clouds. So you can see in a few minutes how you can do some really nice effects. And when it dries, it will go nice and flat again. This is a painting what I've done of uh, London overlooking Westminster using the half imperial size Fontaine paper block 
And the big advantage for me was the sky was done in two goes. So the background went in first using a yellow, an orange and a blue. This was then dried off. And once it dries on this paper, it stays in there. I then wet the sky area again and added the nice gray clouds. And because it stays wet a long time, it allowed me to scrape off using a credit card the highlights in the clouds. And also there's no rain in this because the paper is very absorbent. This painting of Wass Water in the Lake District was done on the Matthew Palmer watercolour block. And the big advantage again, because this was painted live at the scene on a nice warm day, the paper stays wetter longer, which means I can work for longer periods in the sunshine. And you can see how I've got these nice cloud effects without it running down the paper. But also once the mountains went on, I could add layers and layers of transparent colour over the top without it lifting off what was underneath, which is a big, big advantage. And same for the water. The water went in wet into wet, and I had a good three or four minutes to work on these reflections, which a watercolour painting is actually quite a long time. Another really good advantage of the paper is it's got a lovely textured surface, which means you can create these wonderful dry brush effects, dragging the side of the brush over the paper to create wonderful texture. Mm -hmm.